Open your Bibles again. Romans chapter 7, verse 15. Again, remember the key word is law. There's no doubt about that. That word is used 23 times in chapter 7 alone, 78 times in Romans. It's a big word, 223 in the New Testament, 523 in the Bible, the word law. God's Torah is more than a, a list of regulations and rules. Torah means teaching. It deals with what God wants us to do in order to live and walk with Him. We're talking about our relationship to the law in chapter 7. We're under the principle of sanctification, the act of God by which He separates us from uh, the consequences of sin and the power of sin, going from chapter 6 through chapter 7. In the first ten verses of chapter 6, we looked at our realization of certain facts. He said three times, know this. It has nothing to do with you making them true. They already are true. Then secondly, we looked at our responsibility to these facts. We need to count ourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. We need to yield the members of our body to God and obey, because whatever you decide to obey, that's who you'll become a slave to. Now we come to our relationship to the law. We looked in the opening six verses at the illustration of marriage, and then last time at the instruction of the law, when he says in verse 7, what shall we say then? When we asked why the law, we answered it with the following things in our last time together. One, it removes our ignorance of sin. Two, it resurrects, interestingly, our sinful desires. Three, it requires the penalty of death. The law does. Four, it reflects the character of God. He is just and holy and righteous. The uh, law fifth reminds us of how terrible sin is. And six, it reveals our carnality. The law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. And number seven, the law reinforces our need of a Savior. The law is a schoolmaster, a tutor, to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. Now we're ready for chapter 7, verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent under the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we pray that you will help us to understand the dilemma that we face as believers, wanting to serve you, wanting to do what is right and pleasing to you, but finding our hearts bent another way. Lord, I pray that you will bring us to the freedom that only you can give. You are the God who sanctifies. You are the God who justifies. You're the God who gives us your wonderful Holy Spirit to set us free from the law of sin and death. So God, I pray that you'll just open up our hearts and we'll understand because you, Lord, are the one that has been teaching us. Thank you. Help us to be teachable. In the wonderful name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. I don't know a passage in the Bible that troubles people any more than this one. Uh, I guess in one sense because it's very honest. 
it really describes. I like when a prayer time we were having earlier this evening, uh, one of the men prayed. He said how much he thanked the Lord for this passage. Because it really is easy to identify with. We're all there. What I want to do, I don't do. And what I don't want to do, I wind up doing. So we can thank the Lord for that. It, it's a difficult passage because it's telling the truth. And there's no way we can, uh, you know, snow people. No way we can go around, play a little church, and try to act like we're really good. No, folks, this is the truth about it. But having said that, the reason it's controversial is that believers through church history have disagreed about whether the person described is a believer or not. You see, it is so pointed about carnality that there are many people who are not comfortable with that. Because in their stripped-down version of Christianity, in which their own rules govern, they have decided what is good and what is wrong based on their own ability to appear good. And so they've decided this could not possibly be a believer. So they say this is describing the unbelieving state before someone comes to know the Lord. Well, I can just put that in the trash can right now. If that were true, there would be no point in the discussion through the whole section of chapter 6 and chapter 7. There would be no point to it at all. Because of course unbelievers would be that way. But the thing that we don't understand is that when we come to the Lord, we don't stop being sinners. There are many churches who've tried to believe that, only to discourage their people terribly. They talk about the eradication of the old sin nature, and that somehow we don't have a propensity to sin anymore. Well, I can even hear the sinful attitudes when it's being discussed. It, it's not real. It's not honest. This is real and honest. And the truth is, this is the struggle of the Christian life. And the reason why it's important to face it is that a lot of us never go to the answer because we won't deal with the struggle. We never find what God has for us, which is glory wrote in chapter 8, but we never get to it because we won't face our own selves in Romans chapter 7. This is true even when you come to know the Lord. Many people try to add Jesus to an already fulfilled life, and they don't deal with their sin. They don't confess their sin. They don't repent of their sin. And they wonder why they never somehow have that relationship with God they wanted. Yeah, we have to deal with who we are, folks. We don't run away from being honest before God. And if we want to have freedom, we've got to understand this. Another interesting problem here is that Paul's known the Lord for a long time. So the question is, is he describing his present experience or something that he had in the past and he found that glorious victory? I think the honest appraisal of this is a simple truth, that from time to time we move from being controlled by the Spirit of God and enjoying the blessings of that, we move quickly into carnality. It can happen in the best of us at the most spiritual times. So the line between being spirit-filled and being carnal is very thin. It's best that we not proclaim that we are filled with the Spirit, but rather let our lives demonstrate that we are. It's a little bit proud and arrogant to say that you know you are filled with the Spirit. In that is the danger of a lack of humility and a spiritual pride. Some people believe that, well, I prayed and they laid hands on me, everything else. Everybody's got his own deal as to why he believes he's controlled by the Holy Spirit. There's somehow something wrong with that because you and I have to live with each other. And we don't have up days every day. Amen? That was very weak. Are you dishonest? Come on. We don't have up days every day of the week. All right. Praise God. Oh, it's hard to be truthful about what's going on inside of you. And that's what this passage does. It kind of takes us beyond all of the psychological babble that we hear in our world and people trying to get us to just let it all hang out. It gets far beyond that. It just hits us straight and says, this is what's going on inside of you. You want to do what's right, and you wind up not doing it. You want to avoid what's wrong, and you wind up doing it. Oh, wretched man that I am. 